And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go briefly through, uh, first of all, what the Irish Research Council does, and then specifically on the two research programs that we, we fund. So, firstly, what is the Irish Research Council? Essentially, we support excellence in research across all disciplines. Um, we have a full range of supports for postdocs, PhDs, researchers, um, and one of the, the, the key roles we have, apart from our funding role, is, is policy and advice to the Department of Education Skills and uh, the Higher Education Authority. The Irish Research Council is located within the Higher Education Authority. We share the same building. I worked for the Higher Education Authority previously on the Springboard Initiative, one of the Labour Market Activation Initiatives. So um, a lot of the staff in the Research Council would have previously worked with the HEA. So um, we have worked across the whole range of areas in higher education, from funding to policy to capital uh, to activation measures. So anything within higher education, the HEA and the IRC, we look after that. Um, so I'm just jumping on here, sorry. Just in terms of specifically enterprise and the enterprise programs, we would track very closely what our research funded uh, awardees are doing in terms of the output into industry. And what we've what we've what we've seen certainly in recent years is that the connection between um, the SME sector, the large multinationals, and also the NGO sector is that when we fund uh, researchers uh, on our enterprise programs, there are very, very positive outputs. Um, but just to reiterate in terms of the IRC itself, we look after a whole range uh, of research funding and um, one of the questions we often get asked is do you only fund researchers that are involved in STEM or are involved in business? And the answer is no. Uh, one of our taglines is we fund everything from archaeology to zoology. So um, we do fund humanity subjects as well and we do have programs that are dedicated uh, to humanities as well. For example, um, the postgraduate awards there, the Government of Ireland Award, would be across AHSS and STEM. Um, in terms of then other smaller awards, I would have previously worked on um, a program called Ulysses. And what Ulysses does is we have a, we have a partnership with the French Embassy and we fund 20 researchers every single year to work in partnership with researchers in, in France. And the basis of that is that we think these small awards can actually lead to bigger bigger awards. In other words, that the investment we make is two and a half thousand euro per, per researcher. Uh, we hope that that will build into something. Uh, for example, research that we funded five, six years ago are now working on Horizon 2020 applications. So we do see a key role in the IRC as that kind of seed funding for the early stage researchers because we do recognize that there aren't a lot of funding opportunities out there for researchers. Um, so one of our key roles is making sure that the researchers that are in the system have access to funding like that, like the travel grants, so they can actually develop their own careers. Um, there's some of the statistics in 2014, just top level uh, stats in terms of, of, of what our funding base is and where that funding is used. So we get 31 million euros of, of, of state funding uh, from the budget every single year, and that's used um, to fund everything. Um, we also have 3.3 million euros from other sources. Now, the bulk of that will be on the enterprise side where we have enterprise partners who will, uh, which we'll show you uh, later on, uh, who will pay a proportion of the research costs for, say, a postdoc or a PhD or a research master's student. Um, essentially, when we're asked, well, what's the benefit of, the, of our awards? Why, why do we do what we do? Um, essentially, it comes down to the five bullet points, um, and we can we can use those bullet points for, for most of our programs actually. Um, and uh, there's, there's 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 two considerations as well. The, the statistics show that most PhD graduates won't go into academia, and um, we're very much aware of that that most of our PhD graduates are going to get jobs that are not traditional jobs for PhDs. So what's key for us is that for all of our programs, they need to have um, exposure to commercially orientated research, the environment. We look for um, logic developments in the sense that if you're going to undertake a PhD, there's also, we need to see uh, the soft skills developed so that 
post award they are well capable of going into the marketplace and, and gaining employment. So in terms of the two schemes that I look after, one is called the Enterprise Partnership Scheme and one is called the Enterprise Based Program. They're quite similar and I'll explain the difference in the next slide. But essentially it's a researcher who can work with a business or company, a registered charity, uh, an NGO, um, so it's a very, very wide uh, number of organizations that we would work with. For example, we would have a lot of our research students who are based at Intel, uh, who are, as you know, a large multinational. But we also have uh, a considerable number of our researchers in new startups, um, in SMEs, and also within the NGO sector. So again, uh, we try and make it as broad as possible um, that if a company or an NGO is willing to support a researcher and partner with us for four years, that's, that's our job is then to support that research. Um, in terms of how it works in practicality, um, the company contribution to the cost of the award is still as follows. On the Enterprise Partnership Scheme, the university or institute of technology would pay um, 70% of that award, or, uh, sorry, we would pay 70% of that award, and then the enterprise partner would pay 30% of the award. And it's, it's in reverse then for the employment based scheme. The, the key difference is in the employment based program, you have someone who's already in a, in, a, in a company or an organization that wants to do research in a higher education institution, whereas the enterprise partnership scheme is someone that is uh, full time in a, in a higher education institution but would do work placements within a company or organisation. So the vote in reverse if you like. Because what we find is that uh, the programmes, having that flexibility uh, offers more opportunity for people. Um, so essentially on the EBP, the researcher is a full-time employee of the company or the NGO. And again, it's, it's open to SMEs, multinationals, um, based anywhere in, anywhere in the world for the enterprise partnership scheme, sorry. Um, but for the enterprise-based program, you have to be uh, employed within the Irish state. Um, that's just a, just a quick overview of some of the, the types of projects that we are funding currently. Uh, remember, it's, it is a competitive fund. So, uh, for example, what we find is that the success rates in terms of, of the applications is quite high. It was 70% last year. And the reason why it's so high is that before someone comes and makes an application, they need to have um, an enterprise uh, mentor in place. They need to have an academic supervisor in place. And they need to have a really good piece of research that's been supported by a HEI and by an organization. So once all those things are in place and when the application is made to us, the, the, the success rate has to be very high because they've gone so far down the line anyway. But again, I just did what, what that slide really gives you a, an example of is that the, the wide breadth of the types of research we're doing. And what we would do is we would track progress as well. So for example, if we're funding someone for four years, we would look for uh, progress reports on an annual basis, not just from the scholar, but we look for that from the uh, supervisor on the academic side. And we also look for it from the enterprise supervisor because again, we want to see what's happening. And if, if there is blockages or if there is issues, uh, my job as a program manager is to come in to try and solve those issues. Um, and also we want to track the, the outputs in terms of the academic outputs. So for example, we would ask for have you published papers, uh, your citation records. So again, we try and capture that key data. Uh, and, and what that does is that when we're asked to justify the program, we can say, we can point to statistics, we can point to the fact that a lot of the graduates are getting the employment, and we can also point to the, the actual research output in terms of, of the academic output. Um, in terms of the funding available, that again describes exactly how, how it works, the practicalities. Um, what, I, what I've done there is give you kind of the top level stuff. Um, obviously the terms and conditions are far more detailed, so if anyone is interested, what I will do is I will certainly email the terms and conditions just so that people are aware. What I normally do is at these kind of events, if I meet a company, um, I normally have a follow-up meeting with them to see say, whether the, the programs are actually for them or not. Um, and it can take a number of months to get to a point where a company is interested and, uh, and it's for them. So there is a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. But um, that just essentially 
gives you how it's done. Now, my job as one of the program as the program manager and the staff in the IRC, we look after the bureaucracy of this now, um, because that's obviously an issue. So the, the money comes through us, uh, and we channel it to the institution, and the institution then uh, pays the researcher. So we try and take the, the bureaucracy off the company as much as we can. Um, obviously, when they are paying their uh, portion of the of the funding. Again, that's we liaise directly with with the companies. But again, we try and make it as user friendly and as less bureaucratic as possible. Uh, again, just to reiterate the differences between the two schemes, um, there are, we do fund masters, we do fund PhDs, <coughs> and we do fund postdocs for the enterprise partnership scheme. And the postdoc awards are are very very large. Um, and what we find is that it's a small number of awards, but they are um, they are very high caliber, top class researchers to who who are really uh, the top top of their of their own research area. Um, and again, just to reiterate, you need to be a full time employee if you're applying for the uh, the employment based uh, program. So again. It is takes time. Lining up participant on this takes a long, long time. And what we try and do is always have one of the programs open. So, for example, the employment-based program um, applications closed uh, in February uh, for the scheme in 2016. But the enterprise partnership scheme will open in March, so it's opening in two weeks' time. And the uh, scholars who are awarded the enterprise-based program awards um, this year will start in October and the successful candidates in the March call will start on January 17. So uh, what we tend to find is that people that might be disappointed with the with the EVP and maybe haven't made the cut-off deadline, we always say, well look, there's a second, there's a second chance here. Um, that's just an example of the companies we work with. As you can see, it's a wide range of companies um, across all sectors. Uh, and we've built up a good relationship with our, with our uh, employers over the years. And we try and expand that all the time. Uh, we try and match make with HEIs. For example, uh, I had one company contact me last month. We were in the Munster region, and um, I liaise them with UCC and CIT to see whether they, they have uh, any candidates that, that could be uh, potentials for the EDP. Um, again, you can see the benefits for researchers. Um, it's, the, it's fit for employment post post award, and then the benefits for, for our enterprise. Um, there's a risk reduction in terms of the value for money we're providing, uh, maximise the potential for innovation, uh, recruitment of new employees with new skills, and you know you have a dedicated researcher on site. I think that's key, and that's how we sell this program. Um, so the last thing, just to reiterate, that's the funding opportunities that are available um, this year. Actually, that should say December 16 and December 16, and obviously March 16. Um, that's our website and our Twitter and uh, Facebook. You can email, email me at info. My name is Justin Sinnott and um, I'm very happy to provide any information. I'll be here after I, I, I finish this uh, speech. So thank you for listening um, and uh, as I said, if you have any questions, I look forward to it. Thank you.